welcome to the Renaissance English History Podcast. I'm your host, Heather Tesco, and I'm a storyteller who makes history accessible because I believe it's a pathway to understanding who we are, our place in the universe, and to being in touch with our own humanity. So this is the August minicast just for newsletter subscribers. So for today's minicast, I want to talk about a medieval lady named Elizabeth Tilney. She was born in 1445, and she is a really fascinating woman on her own. She served as lady-in-waiting to Elizabeth Woodville and to Henry VII's wife, Elizabeth of York. But she's also known because she became the first wife of Thomas Howard, Earl of Surrey, And thus she became the maternal grandmother of Anne Boleyn and the grandmother of Catherine Howard as well, the paternal grandmother of Catherine Howard through her son. And her great granddaughter, of course, was Elizabeth I. So she gave birth to a very important line of women. She was born around 1445. She was an only child of Sir Frederick Tilney of Ashwellthorpe, Norfolk, and Elizabeth Cheney of Fenditton, Cambridgeshire. Frederick died around 1447, and Elizabeth's mother remarried to a guy called Sir John Say. He was the Speaker of the House of Commons. And interestingly, Henry VIII's third wife, Jane Seymour, was the granddaughter of a daughter that Elizabeth's mother had with Sir John. So I guess she was sort of the half- great aunt or something like that of Jane Seymour. So she's wrapped up in a lot of these people. We don't know a lot about her early life, but she married Sir Humphrey Boucher around 1465. She had a son and two daughters by him, and she went to court where she was lady-in-waiting to Elizabeth Woodville. She carried Elizabeth's train at her coronation in 1465. During the period when Edward IV had to flee and had been thrown off his throne, thrown off his throne, look at that, Elizabeth went into sanctuary with Queen Elizabeth in Westminster Abbey, and she saw the birth of the future King Edward V. You want to come in and say hi to the microphone, Hannah, and then you go back out with Daddy? Say hi to the podcast listeners. Hi. Can you say Mommy's doing a podcast? Mommy doing a podcast. Nice. Can you count to ten in Spanish? No, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Good what job. Is this? this is a microphone. This is how mommy's recording. Can you go back out with daddy for a little bit? Give me a kiss. Give me a little kiss and go back out with daddy. Thank you. Good girl. You can close the door. Thank you. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? So... During the period, like I said, when Edward IV had to flee and had been thrown off his throne, Elizabeth went into sanctuary with Queen Elizabeth in Westminster Abbey. And she was there when the future King Edward V was born in sanctuary. She remained in sanctuary until Edward was returned to power. In 1471, Sir Humphrey was killed at the Battle of Barnet. He was fighting for the Yorkist cause. And a year later, Elizabeth married Thomas Howard. He was the Earl of Surrey. And this was actually a marriage that the king, Edward IV, himself had arranged. And a few years later, she inherited her father's property of Ashwellthorpe Manor. Thomas Howard was a close friend of Richard, Duke of Gloucester, who did or did not usurp the throne in 1483 and possibly killed his nephews, the princes in the tower, depending on who you do or don't believe. Elizabeth attended Richard's wife, Queen Anne Neville, when Richard was crowned. Thomas's father, John Howard, the first Duke of Norfolk, was killed in the Battle of Bosworth fighting for Richard III. And Thomas was wounded at Bosworth and was sent to the Tower for a few years. And his title of Duke of Norfolk was forfeited, along with his lands and everything like that. Elizabeth was able to survive with her own inheritance, which was really lucky for her, of course. She moved to London, and she lived near St. Catharines by the Tower, which meant she was close to her husband. Before 1487, Thomas was released from prison. His lands and titles were restored to him, and he began serving Henry VII. And both Thomas and Elizabeth attended the coronation of Elizabeth of York. 
Elizabeth was then appointed as Lady of the Bedchamber, which was a huge honor as it meant that she would have close, intimate contact with the Queen. She also stood as godmother to Margaret Tudor, Henry and Elizabeth's daughter, Margaret Tudor, in 1489. Her marriage to Thomas Howard was incredibly fruitful. They had nine children, God bless them. Among them was Elizabeth Howard. She was the mother of Anne Boleyn. And Lord Edmund Howard, he was the father of Catherine Howard. And there was also Thomas Howard, the third Duke of Norfolk, who was involved in much of the intrigue involving his nieces in the court of Henry VIII. So you're constantly reading about Thomas Howard doing this and plotting that and scheming. And so that was her son. She died in 1497 and Thomas Howard, her husband, not her son, then married her cousin and he had six more children with her. So they were fertile. Elizabeth was the grandmother, not just to Queens, but also to three of Henry VIII's mistresses. She was the grandmother to Elizabeth Carew, Mary Boleyn, and supposedly Mary Howard, who was the Duchess of Richmond, who was or was not Henry's mistress, but probably was. During the reign of Henry VIII, the Howards became the most important family in all of England. In 1495, John Skelton, he was the poet laureate of Henry VII, he was staying with the Howards and he wrote The Garland of Laurel, in which Elizabeth is mentioned as the character of the Countess of Surrey. Three of her daughters are also mentioned in the poem. It's a poem that talks about a time when Elizabeth, her daughters, and the women of her household made a garland of laurel and silks and pearls and put it on Skelton's head as a sign of respect and homage to the poet. It seems like a kind of weird thing to do when you're hanging out with a house guest, but whatever, I'm not going to judge. Elizabeth is depicted in a stained glass window at Holy Trinity Church, Long Medford, Suffolk. She's shown facing Elizabeth Talbot, the, du the Duchess of Norfolk, and both figures are surrounded by the Mowbray family's coat of arms. And there's also a very romanticized fictional account of her life written by Juliet Dimoak. Dimoak? I'm sorry, Juliet whoever you are. I apologize. It's called The Sun and Splendor, and it depicts Elizabeth, known as Bess, at the court of Edward IV. And I have a link up on the website to the archival page for all the mini casts where you can check that out. It was published in 1955. I'm totally going to read it. It looks really juicy, like those kind of fictionalized romantic books of the 50s. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this mini cast for newsletter subscribers and found it interesting. Remember, you can always get in touch with me at 801-683-9756 or at Tesco or via the Facebook page, facebook.com slash Englandcast. And again, all of these mini casts are archived on the passworded page of the site. The password is newsletter friend, all one word. And I'll make sure that that's included in each issue of the newsletter as well. Thank you so much for your listeners, listenership and support, and I will speak with you soon. Bye-bye. Blow, northern wind, a scent for baby sweating. Blow, northern wind, blow, blow, blow. Ich hoor te boord in bauerbrich, dat soli semli is on sea.